Hello, Internet. My name is Ayla Tesla Rabe. And I am Kent Shores. So true. And today, we're going to give you a list of the five accessories we think every guitarist needs. There's so many products out there for guitarists. It can be really challenging to know what will actually give you value for your dollars. We at least have a couple decades of guitar experience between the two of us. So here's our no-nonsense list of five guitar accessories that you actually need. Well, before we actually start with the list, I would like to submit number zero. Learning how to actually play, at the end of the day, no gadget will teach you how. So, you know, lessons could always be a good thing. So check us out at Guitario.com for a free seven-day trial. Uh, it's Guitario.com slash try. Sign up. What we're trying to say is, is we teach lessons. That's all. <laughs> Number one, clip-on tuner. Yeah, I should actually have, have the, I I was actually just have the clip-on tuner. <laughs> the clip-on tuner. So for anyone out there who has gone through our Guitario method, you know that learning how to tune your guitar is the first thing you learn how to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing will really sound right if your guitar isn't in tune. Tuners are pretty much an essential purchase for any guitar player. Um, there's a variety of tuners, you know, there's headstock tuners like this one. This is the Nexus 360 from D'Addario, which is really cool. Um, there's some that you plug your guitar into directly, uh, pedal tuners, app tuners, there's a million of those out there. Um, but we're showing this one, um, and what makes it unique uh, for me, um, obviously the head moves around a little bit so you can kind of get it into the right spot, um, and so you can see it nice and clear. And uh, to be honest, my favorite thing about it is it's USB rechargeable, which yeah. is really cool. Most uh, clip-on tuners are do need batteries. Yeah, and I know for me, I don't, this is terrible, but sometimes the tuners that run out of battery just kind of end up tossed into the corner because it just, I don't know, something about the batteries you got to put in tuners, they can be really finicky. And um, I think the best part of clip-on tuners like this is you could sing into them also. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah, totally. You know, picture Super singing. Helpful. Yeah. Uh -huh. What features I can't? <laughs> oh, I don't have it on. Clip-on tuners are also really great because uh, you never forget it. You know, if you go to a jam session or a gig or your buddy's house and you're like, oh yeah, right, it's always on your guitar. So if you have your guitar, you have your tuner. Really nice phone uh, app tuners are kind of similar to me as well. Yeah. As far as functionality. I mean, I guess this wouldn't be that helpful if you had a headless guitar. But... Yeah, I've seen people clip uh, them onto different parts of the headless guitars. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can, so, you can hook it on the back. Clearly a good purchase for anyone. He plays guitar. Mm -hmm. Next on the list, capos. Capos are awesome. They're so great. And this is also something we touch on in our Guitario method, but capos are, of course, an excellent tool for beginners to move around open chords on the neck, uh, you know, before you're comfortable with bar chords. That being said, Capos are not only for beginners and can be used in very artistic ways to, you know, move open chords, like really juicy, nice, big open chords around the neck um, in artistic ways. Oh, am I doing it? All right. That's an example of a nice chord that I can now move around because of the capo. A lot of capos, when they have even pressure on the neck, are uh, can really throw your guitar out of tune. So something that is adjustable or something like this G7 capo that kind of like morphs to the radius of your guitar uh, is really useful. Um, we had a tune where we had to go like from here and then I very quickly had to go to, to there and make sure the guitar is in tune. If I used uh, just a normal capo, that would have been like horrendously out of tune. Yeah. Um, so it uh, finding a good capo um, can be uh, well worth your money. So every guitar player, I think, should own a capo. It should just be sitting in your drawer. It is definitely something, if you don't own one, that you should be looking to get. So the next thing we're going to talk about is getting a string winder slash cutter. Usually you can find kind of an all-in-one tool that can do all that stuff. Uh, inevitably, your guitar strings are going to get old and are going to require being replaced. Uh, and uh, it doesn't matter what strings you buy. Um, they just That's just what happens to strings. They get old. They start sounding kind of weird. You're going to need to change them. And, you know, I think 
uh, you don't, you, you're going to want to learn how to do this yourself rather than always having to go to a shop. You know, if you have string snaps or something like that, you'd want to have the skills to be able to put new strings on yourself. And one of the most important tools for that for me is, is one of these. It just saves so much time. Uh, and then having the cutter is really nice. You make things look neat. I really hate the like yeah. flying around strings up there. Um, wow, way to diss Tom Morello. For some people rock it. His like, I look at his guitar and I go like. It suits him. It works, yeah. For me, it doesn't work. That's fair, and it could be dangerous. I cut myself on my guitar just the other day. Yeah, Pretty nothing long. more dangerous than a loose string. No, mm -hmm. nothing. Especially and... an E string. True. Or G actually, G is a uh, vicious one. Yeah. Well, this is a device from my own collection. I've used it many times. But uh, yeah, again, the string winder, perhaps less essential because, you know, when you're changing your strings, you can turn the tuning pegs with your fingers. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it does save time. It's um, way faster. Yeah, it's really efficient. And I mean, I can't really think of a reason to not have one, especially if it comes with the string cutter. Yeah, they're, and they're generally not expensive for the most part, regardless of what brand you get. So um, definitely be on the lookout for one of those. Okay, number four on our list is a polishing cloth or an entire cleaning kit. Um, so when you're changing your strings, that can be the perfect opportunity to clean your guitar because then the whole body is exposed. And you can really get into all of the crevices and cracks on the guitar. And not only is it great to maintain the aesthetics of your guitar, but it can actually be really good for keeping your guitar in as good shape uh, for as long as possible. Um, so there's lots of cleaning supplies out there. You could have uh, just kind of like a spray cleaner to get sort of the grime and dust off. Uh, polishing cloths are really helpful with that too, just to make sure that uh, you've got this, uh, I don't know, a nice clean instrument. I often will use like uh, lemon oil on rosewood fretboards. Just make sure whatever you're putting on your guitar, just read the instructions and make sure that it's not going to do any damage to a finish that might be on your guitar or uh, a neck. It's usually some finish issues can sometimes be there. So just double check you're always reading the instructions and what that cleaning uh, product will do to your instrument. A lot of kits will include, you know, an actual fretboard conditioner. Uh, and the point of that is to get all of the gunk and oil off of the wood. And, you know, it keeps, of course, your fretboard in the best condition as possible, but it will also help your strings last longer. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it sounds like a great situation to me. Yeah. And you can also find products to help clean the metal parts of the guitar. I find they often get quite dusty. Um, it's not really the end of the world. It's more like a, how it looks, but it can be nice just to kind of keep that polished. Um, you might feel more inspired to play your instrument if it is looking in pristine condition. Whoa, what's this? It's number five on our list. <laughs> what's number five on our list, Ken? It is a guitar stand. Um, guitar stands are an essential tool for guitar players. I mean, it's not just for aesthetic purposes. You're more likely to pick up your guitar and practice if there's less barriers between you and the instrument. If your guitar is ready to go and sitting there, I mean, you just run and grab it and pick it up and you're playing. There's no get the case, pull it out of the back of the closet, find a place for the case, pull it. You know, there's so many steps. Yeah. Uh, I know for me, I always love having a guitar out and I can just grab and go. Whenever I'm inspired, I just want to go. Absolutely. And I mean, there's a lot of psychological research on it, too. Just leaving something easily accessible inspires you to play more. So, you know, if you're someone who maybe finds it hard to motivate yourself to practice or you go long periods of time without picking up your guitar, this could be a good thing to do. Uh, but another benefit is ensuring that you have a safe spot to put your guitar. I may or may not be speaking from personal experience. I sometimes try to balance my guitars in very precarious ways. I just the other day was sitting at a desk working and a guitar that I had put on the desk kind of started slipping. Kent ran to the rescue and grabbed it before it fell. But you're not always going to have Kent there to pick up your fallen guitars. So Next year for Black Friday. That's what we'll offer. Kent's. Yeah. <laughs> Kent's. <laughs> but until then, uh, you know, a guitar stand can be a great way to ensure that your guitar stays safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And easily ready to rock. So you might notice that this guitar stand allows you to hang the guitar by its neck. This is great for really weirdly shaped guitars like my Meteora here, because if I try to uh, you know, put this in a stand that supports the body, it's going to end up kind of lopsided and unsturdy. But 
That being said, you can also get guitar stands that support the instrument from the bottom. That can be great for a lot of more symmetrically shaped guitars. Yeah, and it's great for uh, Telecaster style guitars that have the kind of thinner headstock. I find on these style of stands, the guitar sometimes slips through and then it's hanging by the like tuning peg, which you, you don't want. So um, <laughs> generally, uh, either some uh, brute force to squeeze it together or just get a guitar stand that holds the guitar from the bottom. There's also I like um, the second option. A little better. Um, there's also wall hanging options. Those are great too if you have a wall that can support your instruments. Um, but just be cautious with those and install those correctly. So that was just our list of five essential accessories, but we'd love to know anything else you can think of that you think any guitar player should have. Yeah, definitely leave us a comment below and let us know. Uh, we love seeing your comments, so uh, go nuts. Do it. Leave 50 comments if you want. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, have a beautiful day. See ya.